Can you do government contracting if you have a felony conviction? Hey guys, Derek here, and I'm going to be sharing some resources with you today to help answer this question. I have received actually many inquiries about this, and it's not something that I have a lot of personal experience with, and I'm not a lawyer, so answering this question for me is, is a little bit tougher, but what I'm going to do or attempt to do in this video is to share some resources with you to help you answer this question best for yourself. And to do that, I'm gonna be screen sharing with you two different documents. So let me jump over here to my screen. One is going to be this article written by Holland and Knight, who are folks that are in government contracting law, which I am not. And then also I'm gonna be sharing with you a final ruling from the Federal Register, uh, federalregister.gov. This is why I'm actually citing a source with a government website. So this is gonna go back to 2016 when the ruling was made. And this article by Holland and Knight lets us know the U.S. government has finalized regulations amending the federal acquisition regulation, the FAR, that will affect an estimated 350,000 federal contractors. The final rule prohibits federal agencies from entering into contracts with corporations that have any unpaid federal tax liabilities or felony convictions unless the agency has first considered suspension and debarment. So these two statements here may look familiar to you if you've ever filled out a, a company reps and certs, representations and certifications. This is where they ask you, does your company have any unpaid tax liability or has your company been convicted of a felony? And this is where it gets a little confusing for me because they're drawing a distinct difference between the person and the company or the corporation itself. So let me jump over here to the Federal Register. This is the Federal Register where it says the Daily Journal of the United States government. So this has all been notated and documented. And they're saying that there was an interim rule a year before in uh, 2015. And this is basically the final ruling and there has been no changes to it. And again, um, it went into effect September 30th, 2016. They share with us a little bit of uh, the background and some of this summary stuff, but I'm trying to keep this short as a GovCon quick tip for you. So let's just get to the, the first thing here. They define the meaning of corporation. They're saying a corporation is a legal entity that is separate and distinct from the entities that own, manage, or control it. It is organized and incorporated under the jurisdictional authority of a government body such as state or DC. The law does not specify any particular type of corporation, but the most common type of corporation is a subchapter C corporation. They also go on to say the corporation is an artificial construct, a legally created entity that generally has the same rights and responsibilities as a natural person. Thus, the corporation is not automatically immune from being convicted of a felony uh, itself, guys. So they're talking about the corporation itself, the company, the business being convicted of a felony. A corporation can commit crimes and it can be held criminally liable for the illegal act of its directors, officers, employees. You know, they're talking about you here, the owners. A corporation cannot be jailed if convicted. Otherwise, it faces the same consequences as a natural person. Depending on the facts and circumstances, any corporation may be convicted of a felony criminal violation under any federal law, separate and apart from any felony criminal conviction of any of its directors, officers, employees, agents, and shareholders. Again, so they're creating a lot of separation here. While the liabilities of the corporate entity are separate from the liabilities of the shareholders, the shareholders may become liable for corporate liabilities under the legal doctrine of piercing the corporate veil. Under certain facts and circumstances, a court may pierce the corporate veil and ignore the legal separateness of a corporation and its shareholders and hold them uh, basically viable. So it kind of is just going to depend. So from this, I'm gauging that there is a bit of a separation, but not always, because there's this thing called the corporate veil that could be pierced. And if the corporation does something wrong, it can come down to the owner. But that's not really what we're talking about. It's not really the question I'm, I'm looking to answer here. So the only other main thing that I gauged from this is where they are talking about a, a time allotment, basically like a cool off period from the time of the conviction. And here they're answering a question, but they're saying there's no change made. And then they're citing section 744 and 745 that says it applies to any corporation that was convicted of a felony criminal violation under any federal law within the preceding 24 months. So I thought that was interesting. So they do say specifically 24 months, we're talking two years from the conviction. And so now we're gonna bounce back to the article because I'm not a lawyer, I am not authorized or qualified to interpret the law. So let's see what they have to say here. They say the US government finalized on September 30th, 2016 regulations amending the, the FAR, uh, saying it's going to affect 350,000 contractors. 
This new regulations were promulgated as a result of the 2014 legislation and prohibit federal agencies from entering into contracts with corporations that have any unpaid federal tax liability felony convictions unless the agency has first considered suspension and debarment. That's important. They keep repeating that the agency must first consider suspension and debarment. All federal contractors need to be aware of this new regulation as it could impact the ability to win federal contracts. Now, the final rule adopts without change to the interim rule in 2015 that I talked about. Specifically, the FAR requires each contractor responding to the federal solicitations to represent whether it is a corporation that has any unpaid federal tax liability. We know this. Or number two, and this is us, it is a corporation that has been convicted of a felony criminal violation within the last two years. And then parentheses, a conviction includes a plea agreement. So if uh, you have a plea agreement within the last two years, they're saying that also applies to you as these folks here are interpreting this. It says if the contractor answers in the affirmative to either of these two points they're talking about, the federal contracting officer must notify the agency official responsible for initiating suspension or demarment. Under the new regulations, the contract cannot be awarded until a determination is made that suspension or debarment of the contractor is not necessary to protect the interests of the government. So for me, guys, I'm really taking away two things from this. There is a separation and a difference between being the owner of a business and having a conviction of the corporation, the company itself. From the sources and the information I could find, this is all about the convictions of the company or the corporation. The other thing that I see here that's important is the 24 month cool off period, if you will. If your company or corporation has had a conviction in the last 24 months, then you must basically disclose that to contracting and give contracting the opportunity to suspend or disbar you probably basically until that 24 month period is over. So I came into this looking for specific information on, you know, hey, I'm a person who has a, a felony conviction. Can I do this or not? I was not able to find any resources on that. It looks like all of the legality is put on the corporation since the contracts are being awarded to the corporation and your entity registered in SAM, they're not being pinned on to you personally. So it's important that I think we know that. But I also want you to know that if you do have a felony conviction, that doesn't mean you might not have trouble or issues in other areas, such as getting onto a government base when they do a background check that could prohibit you from you know, performing on a contract. So that's something that you definitely want to be aware of that you probably would run into issues. And also if you're needing to get something like a clearance for your business, a security clearance, you may also run into issues with a felony conviction as well. Again, I don't know, this is not my area of expertise, but these are some things to consider for the future of your GovCon business if you're going to move forward with you know, using the resources that we've covered today. Lastly, guys, I must say and also repeat, I am not a lawyer. I am not qualified to interpret the law. So if this is something that you are looking into doing and you do have a felony conviction, you know, take the resources that I gave you as you know, supplements and keep researching this on your own or consult a lawyer or legal advice if that's something that you think you would want to do before moving forward with something like this. So I will provide both of the links that we covered today, the article and the Federal Register link in the description of this video so you can check it out on your own. And I will see you in the next video.